I'm fed up with everyone emailing in the booth saying, Chapman, you're just a big loudmouth. Get on a horse yourself. Well, here I am. Let's shut up all those horrible people. The likes of AP McCoy, the champ, watch and learn. Of course, Richard Johnson, Tom O'Brien and Darren O'Dwyer, they're all jockeys down here at the master trainer, Philip Hobbs's yard. Well, I'm here to put the top horses through the paces. All the owners, watch and learn. You'll find out more from me from the master trainer anytime. Come on! Philip, this must be an exciting time of year, up on the gallop, seeing, hopefully, potential stars strutting their bits. Oh, yeah, very much so, the autumn, when things are just about to get underway, so looks like uh, we're looking forward to a new season, anyway. And one horse who should be certainly making the grade, snap tight, third in last season's Supreme Novices Hurdle. I mean, he's always been a talented horse. He has, and he's always been, up to now, a little bit fragile, doesn't stand training great, but he's... Now he's a more mature horse, hopefully that's going to help. He's a big, strong horse, ran a great race at Cheltenham, had a minor back injury and didn't run after Cheltenham. But um, we're hoping to run him in the condition hurdle at Kempton the end of October. And uh, if he went and won well there, which is a race that Rooster Booster won some years ago, then champion hurdle might be on the agenda or otherwise he might go and obviously chosen. Has he scored over a fence already? He has, he was very good. Right. And I'm sure that he will go novice chasing at some stage. But um, it's just depending on what happens at Kempton first. He's a horse who's probably slightly ground dependent. He'd like it good, wouldn't he? He doesn't want soft, yeah. Right. yeah. He would prefer um, good ground. Not that he wants it fast either, but he just wants good ground. And, and as a six-year-old, I mean, his best years should still be ahead of him. So is he one of those horses that, for want of a typical racing cliche, everything he's doing over hurdles is a bonus? Or is he more of a hurdles horse than a chaser? I'm sure there'd be no reason at all why he shouldn't be a decent chaser, but you know his class over hurdles would suggest that maybe he might be good enough for champion hurdles, so we'll go that route first. But I think the most important thing, though, is um, it's more of a time thing, really. He's, he's benefited for the time he's been in training, and he's improved all the time, and he'll improve further, I think. And he's a horse, in a way, who perhaps hasn't quite got the credit maybe he, he deserves. He's, he's not one that's caught the public's imagination for all that he's got that sort of classy form. Yeah, because he hasn't actually been winning. I think that's the reason. You know, he's been placed in these high-class races without quite winning, and and therefore he's not captured to the public imagination, as you say. Well, one horse who who should at least uh, set everyone's eyes alight, uh, Pancake, who's uh, an extraordinary horse to look at, but also a horse with ability. Oh, massively so. Yeah, um, he is very much um, a potential chaser, and that'll be his job last this season. Last season, he just ran in two chases because. We ran him in high-class races. He didn't win, so therefore he's a novice for this year, which would be a big bonus. I think he'll end up wanting three miles, probably, but we'll just see how we go. His jumping in the past has been a little bit careful. Is he, is he one you think will become a little bit more slick in time? Yeah, I'm sure he will. Um, probably a good fault being a bit careful to start with, which he has been. Um, definitely better on soft ground, though. Soft ground suits him well. Looking him up on the gallops, I mean, in a way... He, no offence to the owner, but he looks like a great big boat sort of thing. I mean, he does look like a staying chaser in the making. Very much so, yes, he is, yeah. Well, that's Pancake, uh, extraordinary looking horse. A horse who's, who's much younger and, well, probably not much younger actually, but uh, certainly less experienced, Bally Dub, won the maiden hurdle at Newbury very easily and possibly heading for novice chases? Yes, he will be. His run at Newbury was his only run for us. He's only run the once and he won well that day. Soft ground, which will suit him well. Um, I'd imagine we'd run him in a hurdle race first anyway and, and see which way we go. You could do with a bit more experience in any case. But chasing is very likely to happen sooner than later. We can actually have a look at him quickly at uh, Plumpton when he was in training with Henrietta Knight. But he, he's clearly a horse with ability. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And, you know, had very little racing experience and should improve a lot. So possibly handicaps first time? Well, I suppose you run in a handicap hurdle somewhere first, yeah. And then we'll decide after that what we're going to do. Ali Dub certainly one to follow. And another one, Planet of Sound, won a couple of pretty nice novice hurdles, ended up with quite a high rating, 132, I think it was. I mean, won't be an easy horse to place perhaps in handicap. So again, would you go straight novice chasing? He's one that definitely goes straight novice chasing. Yeah, he scored very well at the end of last season. 
Um, he's a big, strong horse that should be better over fences anyway. And with that sort of rating, there's no point in go staying the hurdle race route. So go straight over fences. Probably doesn't want the ground too soft. Will definitely get two and a half miles, but has enough pace to go to. Now, despite the intro to this, Philip, I suspect Richard Johnson won't be too concerned about me becoming stable jockey in the near future. However, I uh, just wanted a quick word about Richard because he is part of the sort of furniture at the yard. Uh, and, you know, one of those jockeys, everyone's always going to say, well, if McCoy wasn't around, you know, he'd have been champion jockey year in, year out. Um, he's been a sort of great part of the stable. Oh, very much so, yeah. And, and he's a thoroughly um, likeable fella. And that's a lot of the reason he's done so well, because own, owners like him and want him to ride. Um, besides the fact that obviously he's, he's very, very good as well. Um, I suppose he's probably the jockey that's ridden the most winners without ever being champion jockey. I don't know if that's a certain, but um, I would think that's the case. Anyway. What are his traits? I mean, we know with McCoy, you know, strength in a finish, the fact that he can be riding a finish seemingly with a circuit still to go, but he can get the timing right on those horses that, that do, need, do need to be held up. From, from your point of view, what, what are Richard's qualities that he brings to your horses? Um, I think that he's, he's very strong when needed, but also at the same time with a young horse that needs looking after, he can do that side of it well as well. So, that, you know, that's obviously very important. Um, he's, he's thoroughly good all-round jockey and wouldn't have achieved what he has had, had he not been so. And trainers often say, you know, it's what the jockey says after the race that is sometimes almost as important as what goes on during the race. I mean, he, he comes across as, a, as an intelligent man. He, I imagine he perhaps doesn't say an awful lot after a race, but what he does say is, is probably worth listening to. He would probably actually, if anything, depending on the owner and the situation, have more to say than most, actually, probably. Right. Yeah. Um, but he's certainly very good with the owners and very accurate on his assessment. And how, he doesn't come, obviously, down here every day of the week. Well, how many times would he come and ride work during a season? Or during um, a well, month? more in the autumn when we're getting going. Once the horse has done all their basic schooling and stuff, not so much later on, but um, through a whole season, I suppose he might be down here on average, I suppose, 15 times a year or something. Probably no more than that. And of course, you've got a good backup. Tom O'Brien is a jockey. I know loads of people at the races have been saying, you know, he's the next McCoy. He's, yeah, and he clearly is very, very talented. And, and presumably that, in a way, that's quite good for Richard as well, to have someone snapping at his heels, so to speak. Um, yes, I suppose that's that's uh, true. But I mean, Rich is the first jockey, and obviously Tom very much realizes that he will remain so until the time that um, hopefully Tom will take over from him, because that's very much the plan. Do you think he could be an exceptional talent, so to speak? Very much so. Yeah, I mean, he's still very rel relatively very young, and um, I'm, we hope that um, there could be a lot of improvement to come. Not the need the needs to be, because I think he's very very good in the finished article, probably nearly already, but. Um, um, no, he's just a very good lad, yeah. I, I remember when he came over here, he was quite shy and he wasn't perhaps the best communicator, but I think certainly from a TV point of view, that, that's improved over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, as he's got a bit older, he's got a bit more confident without a doubt. Yeah, that's been a big help. Um, but I think actually, you know, the reason Richard doesn't need to come here schooling too often really is besides... Tom O'Brien, and um, we also Darren O'Dwyer that's based here as well. And um, he's, he's got talent, he's, he's a good little job. You know, yeah, exactly, he's going to lose his £7 allowance soon, but he, but he um, rides very well. Um, Ian Popham will be our stable amateur this year, and he's ridden a lot of point-to-point -point winners and several under rules, so um, he should certainly do well. Um, Reese Flint's been based on the yard, the yard here for a year, he hasn't even had a ride for us yet, but I mean, he had a fantastic spring um, he was the champion novice point-to-point -point rider and rode several hundred chase winners as well. Um, he might be turning conditional before too long, so you know, he's, he's uh, there as well. Besides that, we've probably got another five or six lads that have all ridden point-to-point -point winners and they regularly school here. And, and they're, you know, some of them are only 16, 17, and they're very much possible for the future. So we're rather over-blessed with riding talent, which is very good, but at the same time, we need to give them all a chance. So it's just a difficult balance. So basically, though, if you're a decent rider, people are queuing up for the master. <laughs> well, that's good of you to say so. I'm not sure it's quite as simple as that, but we've got some good lads in here. Remember the old war song? Are we downhearted? No. Then let your voices ring and all together sing. Are we downhearted? No. 
Well, that could have been the battle cry from Philip Hobbs to his troops before the beginning of last season. Many of the stars were out. Massini's Maguire, the Cheltenham Festival winner, and champion Hurdle Hope Noble Request. But some of them are now back for the new campaign, and Hobbsy's gearing up for a good season. Philip, considering the amount of your top horses that were injured at the start of last season, and of course you'd lost Detroit City on the track the season before, um, 109 winners between Britain and Ireland at the end of the campaign, it wasn't all doom and gloom? No, not by any means. Um, you know, we had a good season, but not a vintage season. We just were missing out on the top prizes. And actually, I've always felt for a long time, really, the most important thing of all for any trainer is to have a, a good number of winners. And I suppose we've had over 100 for many seasons, but that's not a guarantee to continue. But I think, in a way, that's possibly more important than winning the big races, because to actually win a number of races is feasible and achievable. To actually say you're going to set out and win the big races, that, that depends on a very, very small number of horses and therefore might not happen. Let's just kick off this section with, with an old timer who really perhaps was the highlight of, of last season, Munker Hoston in the Bet365 Gold Cup. Triumph on the final day and your biggest winner of the season. That must have really set you out almost wanting the new season to start straight away. Yeah, I, he's been the most amazing horse, really. He's been here for a very long time, you know, winning big races, and uh, um, he's been a superstar. And, uh, you know, it's um, um, quite emotional, really, to go and win a big race with him again. So it was really good. For most of his career, I've never really known what his perfect trip is. And then he steps up in a race like 365, and suddenly he's stamina-laden. I know, yeah. I mean, when he won the um, uh, Coral Cup at Cheltenham Festival, you'd hardly have thought at that stage that he's going to be going three mile five over fences but um but that coral cup it was an amazing day that day because he came absolutely tanking at the top of the hill it's one of those ones you knew he'd won three out i mean when on a going day he's a, he, you know he was championship class oh yeah absolutely you know he's he, he's he's been you know placed in some of those uh, uh top condition races i suppose he's always just missed out the top end really but um um he's done very well i think we'll aim for the charlie hall i think that'd be the plan um, he'll get some allowances and that some, uh, off the top horses. And actually, there's all this talk about them, you know, whether be the ground not being very good up there. I mean, he, he wouldn't mind firm, you know, he'd manage. Yeah. Whereas some of the others probably would be frightened off by it. So I think the Charlie Hall's the race for him anyway. But if there is possibly a new hero in the yard or, or a hero who, who could go right to the top again, it's the 2007 Ballymore Properties Novices Hurdle winner, Massini's Maguire. If there's a champion around, it could be him. Could be, yeah, could be. I would hope that we got others like that could match him. There, well, well, yeah, because because, be, because I'm not sure that he would be the one that you'd put for the top of the list, you know. But right. at the same time, um, he could be, certainly could be, um, and he will go straight in obvious chasing because there's no need to be doing anything else with him. There's no point running the handicap hurdles, um, and so straight in obvious chasing will be the job. And and obviously he'll have scored already. Um, Obvious question, as it jumps well, presumably. Well, he hasn't actually. Oh, he hasn't? You, you <laughs> well, haven't scored him yet? Well, he wouldn't have done it here because um, oh. his, obviously his last run was um, uh, when he ran at Aintree 18 months ago. Oh. And at that stage, um, uh, we weren't sure what's going to be happening in the next season. So therefore, um, he wouldn't have scored. And, you know, we haven't even got to the stage of schooling him this season as yet. So, so uh, See, no, most, most TV shows now would edit that out. We won't. We'll just let it run and we'll go just go take two. Massini's Maguire, obviously. I mean, you wouldn't have scored him yet, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Not as yet, no. no. And, um, All right. Yeah. So, um, so he, he'll be starting schooling, I'd imagine, next month. Ability-wise, what, what was his problem? He had a minor suspens suspensory problem, <laughs> um, so not a flexor tendon problem, but the uh, tendon problem nevertheless. It won't affect his ability. The chance of him of it really occurring again with him would be very slim because it was only very minor in the first place. So, so hopefully, you know, it shouldn't make any difference. And of course, I remember when he came back to action, I think it was at Chepstow in 2006, on uh, October that month, and, and he ran over that extended two at Chepstow and, and hacked up as he was long odds on shot. Um, but that extended two was always going to be too short for him. I mean, he, he presumably on his hurdle form should get three miles in chases. Yeah, um, and yet, you see, you see, we ran him at Aintree in the three-mile novice hurdle after he won the uh, novice hurdle at Cheltenham Festival. 
and appeared possibly not to get the trip that day. So wasn't that the race where... They Dick, went too fast. Oh, right? I mean, yeah. that wasn't a horse yeah, race. No, it was stupid. Richard yeah. and AP. Yeah, they took each other on and went faster and faster, and they yeah. both fell in the heap. So difficult to know, but I would have thought, particularly now he's a bit older, that three miles shouldn't be a problem. What about Copper Blur then? Six-year-old gelding. I think it cost 155000 at Cheltenham, so an expensive buy. Won the bumper at Cork and then went to Aintree in the bumper there. Yeah, um, he'll go straight in obviously, Hedley. He ran very, very well at Aintree because um, we were very unhappy with his condition beforehand. He would run up very, very light and didn't look great. And then we investigated things afterwards. He's full of stomach ulcers, which has been treated. And he looks, he's actually um, 70 kilos heavier than he was last year. And, um, feeling. and, and, and uh, well, I was actually stood with his only the day in the yard. And I said, that's more than Darren O'Dwyer uh, weighs. He was actually stood next to him. So, um, <laughs> Which will be a good thing, because he's a much stronger horse now. A horse who's done it a little bit already, lead on. Very good novice chaser, won the grade two at Cheltenham and uh, finished second to Oslot at Kempton. We can have a look at him winning at Exeter back in December 2007. I mean, he could be a difficult one to place, though, possibly this season. He could be, but I just hope and think there's still room for improvement if everything goes right. We've had a few niggly problems with him in the last season, which we couldn't really sort out. In the end, we thought it was probably a knee, but... Um, anyway, he seems good now at the moment. Uh, the plan is is to hopefully run him in the valuable handicap hurdle at Chepstow the end of October, and then Paddy Power hopefully if all goes well. This horse I know is going to bring a little twinkle to the master's eye. Bring the boss. He uh, ran a fantastic race at Punchtown where he was second there with nearly top weight in the most valuable handicap hurdle in Europe. Um, so that was a great run, you know. Um, and two and a half that day is his trip, although he's won over two in very soft ground. Um, soft ground is what he needs, and if it was heavy, I suppose two mile novice chase, but otherwise two and a half. I think he'd probably run at Cheltenham in the October meeting in the two and a half mile novice chase there. You know, he ran in the Arkle behind Tidal Bay, but he's a novice chaser because he hadn't he hasn't actually won a novice chase, so he could go right to the top. Yeah, and his first run over fences, you know, he's only run twice in, over fences, and his first run at Warwick, where he was just beaten by Charlie Edgerton's mare, was a very good run. Um, and then he went to Cheltenham and uh, they went too quick for him and he probably slightly lost his confidence due to that. And uh, I, I'd forget the Cheltenham run anyway. I mean, he banks back well at Punchtown afterwards. Another one I just wanted to mention to you, County Zen. Now, I know for some time, having spoken to you in the booth on At The Race about this horse, that this is a horse you've, you've liked. But no other way of putting it, obviously. His last three runs, absolutely shocking. Well, we think there's probably a breathing issue and he's had a breathing operation since. So I hope that'll put things right. He's a genuine horse. I, don't, I think the breathing was probably the reason he lost his form. So we're hoping that's now been put right. And we can have a look at him at Ascot beating Blue Bajan, who might not be the most fluent jumper, but a talented flat race horse. I mean, you know, that was a good performance at Ascot. Very much so, yeah. So he'll, be, he'll be going novice chasing, I imagine. Another horse in the Waitley colours is Blue Gun, six-year-old gelding. Because he has limited experience, I'd imagine he'd run in one handicap hurdle first, then go novice chasing. Um, would probably want the soft ground he won on at Utoxa, stayed on very well. Wasn't a great race, but he won very nicely, so couldn't do any more. Now, if Tomo was doing this, the next thing he'd say is Gershwin, hoping to hit all the top notes. <laughs> but he is a grey gelding. He's got a musical name. He's by Al Haref, and he won a bumper at Kempton, so he could be hitting the right notes in decent novice hurdles. Yeah, I mean, he surprised us a bit that day at Kempton, really, because the first run was OK, but that was a big improvement. So the um, first time he went off joint favourite, second time he was 16 what, to 1. I don't know why he did. Well, he, but, yeah, yeah. But, well that's the reputation of the master. <laughs> anyway, but um, no, he schooled well, that's all gone well, and um, he'd be running over hurdles in October anyway. One horse before we just get on to others that we should be following, who probably won't be around again, noble request. He's had a fracture to the pin bone, um, which... You know, you'd say that 95% of the time these bones heal and then they're fine but it doesn't seem to be actually knitting together properly. And um, at the moment, it's, he's perfectly sound. He's not in the yard at the moment. He's with poly curling, but he's perfectly sound. But nevertheless, um, you know, there's only fibrous tissue there holding things together. So he's going to have more time off, possibly some treatment, hopefully might come back, but, um, you know, he's probably unlikely to. Some horses we know very little about compared to him. Um, Quesha des Obo is a newcomer and certainly looks interesting. Yeah, she won what has turned out to be a decent AQPS flat race um, in the provinces. It's equivalent to a bumper in England. 
Uh, the ground was very soft that day. There's been several winners from behind. Um, and I'd say that, um, you know, she's a nice mare that should do well in Mare's Novice Hurdles. And a couple we'll look out for in the colours of Terry Warner, of course, has had such brilliant trance with you, but also desperation in some ways because of the, the, the injuries that occurred to the great Rooster Booster and, of course, Detroit City on the track. But Nampour and Bruslini could be sticking, hopefully, Terry Warner up there in the, the winner's enclosure where he loves to be. Well, you'd hope so. You know, they're two grey three-year-olds with flat race form that, that hopefully should do well. Just tell us a little bit, Nampour, the first one. Um, he won um, his last race in France in the Promises um, and he would sort of have an equivalent rating in England on the flat of about 85 or so. But he seems, you know, nice, strong sort of horse, so it should do well. And Bruslini? Probably be a bit higher rated. Um, he won last time at um, Clairefontaine next door to Deauville um, and then just got beaten in a Group 3, I think it was, after that. So he probably got a higher rating. Um, but they're two nice young horses. Speaking of nice horses, I Hear a Symphony really started to fulfil the potential that he, everyone must have seen him because he cost a, a few quid from Ireland after his bumper days. Um, when winning at Punchestown, you must have been slight relief almost when he, when he won and won there. Yes, really, because you know, he'd been placed several times without winning. Um, and at times, he has a probably slightly odd head carriage, so you wonder if he's 100% genuine, but we'll go novice hurdling first in October and then chasing afterwards. Of course, Philip, Noble Request is owned by David and Corolla Van, and they could have a ready-made sort of replacement in the shape of Cockney Trucker. Well, I very much hope so, yeah. He's well named, you see, because David Van's a Cockney and his business is uh, transport, so <laughs> Cockney <laughs> Trucker's very good. Um, but he's uh, uh, run twice, one at Sandown, his first bumper, and then um, he was seventh in the Cheltenham bumper, which is a very good run. Um, and he looks to have improved as well, so he'll be going straight novice here, then. So you start off over two miles? Probably, but he'd definitely want further, particularly being a presenting. But he's got enough pace to go two miles, so I should think so, yeah. But there's a little sort of twinkle in the eye about him. He, he could be... Could be nice, yeah. When I mentioned Mussini's Maguire, you said, well, I'm not sure he's the one that possibly I'd be picking out to go right to the top. So obviously in the back of your mind there is. Maybe it's one we've, we've talked about, maybe not, but... Which is that one? Well, well I, of the novice chase department, I mean, I, I would hope that particularly Ring the Boss and Planets of Sound would have at least um, equal ability over fences to Messina and Maguire, but we shall see.